Here's a question for you. Is a torque screwdriver a substitute for competence? No, sir. <laughs> Possibly the shortest video we've ever made, but this is part of a series we've been making called Talk the Talk, where we've been exploring the use of torque screwdrivers and electrical terminals and the feedback we've had so far, and there's been lots of it in the comments, is obviously there's lots of issues where a torque screwdriver won't detect problems with terminations. Yeah, so think about competency. Maybe we've put the connections into the main switch. Our towels have gone in there. We know we've got that stranded conductor going in there. We've tightened them up to maybe 2.5 newton meters of torque. What we often do then is let them settle in, don't we? We maybe give them a little bit of a move and then we re-torque tighten them so we know when we've left that consumer unit, they're in a good shape. Mm. And yeah, that's, I mean, that, on new installs, yeah, you're in charge of that installation. You know where all your terminations are but think about the scenario we've got today gary where a lot of people are revisiting an existing installation right possibly for an ev charger or a heat pump and they're all coming down the down the road and they choose not to fit a new consume unit to put a small consume unit in which means they're going to be start should we say moving the tails Ah, right, okay, so we've got those tails, we're moving them, maybe there's some Henley blocks in service, maybe the meter tails get moved around a little bit as we're adding to the system. Are you suggesting then that maybe we're not going back to those terminals, or we can't in the meter case, yep. and they're working themselves loose? Is there any evidence to suggest yeah, that's happening? Yeah, there was actually. So in the, in the mists of time when people used to fit plastic consumers and possibly tails didn't have uh, glands or support, additional support with them, uh, Electrical Safety First did a lot of tests looking at various types of meter tail, right. various types of main switch. And as a result of that, I think a lot of the changes that we have in the later editions of wire and regulations were incorporated. And that was to do with the smart meter rollout. So people were going in, changing a meter, right. and then suddenly there was loose terminals in the consumer units, and in some cases, fire. Now, I will leave a link to that report below, because it's, it's quite good reading when you get into the topic of how do you prepare your meter tails? You know, do you twist multi-strand ones together? Do you flatten them out? Um, yeah, there's, there's some good reading in there, but let's just say for now, in those scenarios, a torque screwdriver won't get you out of trouble. So, in conclusion, once we start wiggling and moving it, it could actually pull out, wasn't it? The results were, the tails would pull out. So that's one of the issues that we could have. What about the, the one that I found in my college setting, that I'd often go up to a job and they'd say, it doesn't work, or I couldn't get it to test, or when we went live, nothing worked, yet it we tested perfectly, the old, insulation's not a very good conductor. PVC doesn't conduct electricity very well, does it, Gordon? I think what you're getting at there is, Gary, people have actually trapped the PVC in the terminal, and this happens a lot, particularly with cage terminals, or so you've got to be really bad to do it with a screw terminal, because you've got to push it quite away in there uh, to do it, but yeah, you've, you've tensioned down onto the uh, actual plastic of the conductor, you've got to the required torque setting, You've created a joint that at some point is going to fail, probably going to get hot, and that's when you obviously see that melted plastic and, and obviously the yeah, spirals from there. So that cage terminal set to the required torque setting, talked up by the person, won't solve the problem of trapping the PVC in there. Okay, so the tool doesn't get you out of that case, does it? Yeah. And our next up one is obviously the right size conductor in the right size hole. And these, okay. So you see this obviously a lot in consumer units. Obviously, what do we do to increase the size of the, the conductor? Yeah, we look to double them over. I and mean, obviously those holes are going to accommodate probably up to 16 millimeter squared cable. You think your earthing conductor is going into the earth bar, your neutral bars are the same size, etc. And you might be putting in a one mil and then it finds its way, it works its way maybe to the side of the screw. I think it's also quite, um, quite a chance of doing that when we think of stranded cable, yeah? So if all of a sudden you're using 1.5 mil stranded, no strands separate because people haven't twisted them up or doubled them over. Yeah, we create a problem then, don't we? There's not as much conductor clamped into the terminal. Yeah, and again, the same thing. Some of those uh, RCBOs come with uh, what we call class six conductors or incredibly fine stranded yeah. wires. And you'll see this is even written into the regulation that those types of conductors should have some sort of special treatment. Now we don't mean uh, give them a biscuit. We mean obviously adding a suitable crimp terminal or in some cases a ferrule to the end of them as well. Yeah, so we've got not as much copper as we should expect in the terminal can cause us an issue. And that brings us to the one where I think a lot of electricians have been going around buying uh, mirrors that look like they should be used by dentists to inspect the underside, maybe where the bus bar is going, isn't it? So that bus bar misses 
maybe in one of the positions, but the rest of them are, are clamped into position, aren't they? Yeah, so you've missed the cage clamp. So again, cage clamps are incredibly popular now. I think most uh, yeah. MCBs and switch gear have them. Yeah, so you've, you've positioned all your, all your items in line, but as you've put one in, you have missed the, uh, yeah, you've missed the cage clamp. Uh, interesting, some manufacturers have actually designed that problem out, haven't yeah. they? Because they bring a shield up behind it to make that impossible, yeah. but others don't. But there's an even, <laughs> that's one, you wouldn't believe it, Gary. Well, go on, in. Uh, but is that the one where you say you turn it in the opposite direction and actually it tightens down maybe onto a tail, etc., on the cage clamp? Yeah, yeah, so you can. It is possible, and I wouldn't suggest ever trying this, but yeah, you sometimes say, oh, it's tightening onto the conductor when I'm turning it anti-clockwise, right. because actually you're winding the, ca the cage clamp on top of the conductor that you've missed with the uh, with the cage clamp in the first place. Okay, well, I think you probably would find that with a torque screwdriver because I think you'd be going the opposite <laughs> way with the torque screwdriver. However, it was brought up in the comments again, the torque screwdriver won't overcome poor practice, will it? That's it. What's our fifth tip on not gonna get you out of jail with a uh, torque screwdriver? If you damage the conductor. Okay, so you know, there's lots of ways in order to strip our cables. If you go in there maybe a bit aggressively with a side cutters or pliers and you dent the copper, Okay, it obviously becomes a weakened area, and then it doesn't take much, does it, of movement on that conductor, and obviously that can break, even though, again, you may have done the termination up to the required torque setting. Yeah, but you know, a similar scenario can happen there is with people, we've got the torque screwdrivers, but some people over tighten conductors anywhere and put the screw into the conductor, and that flattens it and then also creates a weak point as well, doesn't it? It does, yeah, it does. And there's the other one, isn't there? Whereas maybe if we go back to stranded cable, you've got some of the strands in the cage clamp say on top of the MCB and then some of them are missing sitting down the back. So all of a sudden the point of the most amount of current that's being drawn, he's only got three or four strands in and the rest of them are floating in the back. Mm. So I think we can uh, conclude, Gary, from that catalogue of cable disasters there that uh, a torque screwdriver is certainly not uh, going to get you out of jail and uh, replace uh, common sense and competence. No, I think it's in your toolkit along with your MFT tester in order that you can have an installation that when you've left it, you're very happy that it's tested correctly and to the required manufacturers of torque at terminating points. However, if we've missed anything, please leave it in the comments below. And it all remains is for me to say is, there's no such thing as a calibrated arm.